All right, guys, <clears throat> today's my last day uh, at this beautiful place called Karabi, and I'm gonna go explore one more island. And my driver just showed up. I'm a bit nervous as we did get stranded in the middle of the ocean, but hopefully he's got his, his um, boat fixed and uh, we don't get stranded because I can't do it. I'm already having PTSD. Good morning. Your boat fixed? No more stranding? All right. It's uh, about one hour. Let's do about one hour. All right, let's go. Let me take my shoes off. Yeah, let's take them off. All right, guys, about one hour. <laughs> Sleeping yesterday? It's okay from Dubai already. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And we're good? Okay. And then this one you slowly pick you around. Slowly, right? Yeah. Okay, if water is good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, uh same same place? Okay. Yeah, he was charging me more for shorter time and less distance than yesterday and we went work further places so I had to negotiate three no nah, 25 I'm a little a little nervous but it's okay he says his boat's fixed we got it it's beautiful out here the seas are calm we're getting ready to go it's beautiful out here all right, here we go. We're gonna go see a cave. Very calming. How beautiful.
and isn't this beautiful? It's so relaxing just out here exploring the islands, man. Beautiful ride, very calm and peaceful. One with the ocean, <laughs> nature, and all of its beauty. Man. This is amazing. Thailand is simply amazing. So we've docked, and uh, I guess I'm gonna go get off and explore a little bit. What, what is this island called? You come walk inside there, and walk inside. Do I need shoes? What is this island called? And it's named Riley East. Riley East? Oh, this is Riley. Okay. Oh. Kampunka? This is Riley Island. Better known as Riley Beach. It's a very popular beach. It's usually packed, but since we're here early, I'm going to go exploring a little bit. But man, Look how beautiful this place is. Bam, this is Thailand. And this is my last day <laughs> in Karabi. What a way to spend it, right? Uh, my captain got his boat fixed and uh, it was a nice smooth ride. And um, he's just a sweet guy. Uh, a lot of fun. So let's go exploring and see what we can see. Uh, while we're walking and exploring, I wanted to touch more further on the hostel. Uh, since I've been at the hostel for a couple days now, today's day three, I actually don't mind it. Um, I've been having a meaningful conversations with one of my roommates, well, two of my roommates, but one in particular, I've been talking to her, she's from Hong Kong, and we've been having wonderful conversations. Um, I love talking to people from other countries because it opens your mind up to what they're going through and what they, what they are going through in their country as opposed to seeing it on the news and I don't know if I should give her name. I probably won't. I, I didn't ask her, so I'm not going to give her name. But she did give me insight on into kind of the culture in Hong Kong and how it's changed, the culture in mainland China, a lot of just shocking things. And so, you know, it's, it was, it's been nice being in the hostel, if I'm being honest. It's been really nice. Uh, it's, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. You know, with good people, I would stay in a hostel longer than three days, honestly. If I'm being honest, I'm changing my uh, answer to what I said previously. So, I, I would definitely stay longer than three days with good roommates. Uh, all right, let's go. You're definitely mixing with cultures, the locals. Sawarika, I just said hello. Look at me thinking I'm an honorary Thai. What am I, Thai and Jamaican now? I'm part Jamaica, part Thai, part American? What is going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, look how beautiful. Man. I don't know how they got that thing down there. So in Thai, I'm still perfecting how to say it, but in Thai, if you wanna say hello, uh, that ka at the end is for females, and I forgot what men say, but there are um, different uh, pronunciations for men and women, but for women it's, uh, well, I'll say here in a minute. Um, oh, you got rock climbing too. Wow. For women, it's sawadee ka. Since I've been in Thailand, I thought there were more Americans in Thailand, but I was wrong. There is a heavy European presence here in Thailand. I mean heavy. Go exploring. Look at the coconuts. I did see some coconut trees where I'm where I stay at. Um, they're not fully developed, but man, wouldn't that be wonderful to just be able to pick a coconut up off the ground and break it open and have fresh coconut juice in the morning and fresh coconut meat? That'd be awesome. Man. Ooh. You hear the birds? Wow. Every morning I wake up, I hear birds and they're loud. Oh, there's a trail. Oh, people doing rock climbing. I don't want to do a trail. I'm not prepared. I didn't bring my water. 
it's actually quite cool today. It's supposed to be overcast. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Wow, look at these rock climbers. Look at them, they're rock climbing. Now, if you're a rock climber, come to Thailand and give it a shot. Now, this will test you. I couldn't do it. Hats off to any rock climbers out there. I would love to do it. I would love to hang out with a rock climber for a day or two and learn the ropes. Someone that knows what they're doing, I would love to. I am all for it. But look, at, isn't this a nice place to kind of chill and hang out? Got a bat, whoa, shit. Sorry, didn't mean to cuss. Do you see that lizard? Oh, no, let me get my phone. Let me get my phone. Let me get my phone. I've never seen a lizard so big. What is that? What is that? I am so sorry for cussing. I, I was just filming living my life in this big, big, I thought it was an alligator. Just walking, y'all saw it? What? What? Oh my gosh, I'm gone. Mm -mm. I ain't hiking in Thailand. What the heck was that? What? Hiking? Crazy? I was walking and then this music started playing and I noticed that all the Thai people just stopped walking. So I'm gonna stop walking out of respect because I don't know what's going on. Okay, now I'm gonna walk. Yeah, I was not about to walk. I don't know what that was, but I noticed all the Thai people stopped walking, so I stopped walking. Bam. Oh, let's climb up here. Oh. Alright, it's time to head back. And then that big lizard, I thought it was an alligator. I had flashback from my Florida days. If you know, you know. All right, we are done. We're headed back. What an adventure. Something to start the morning off and is getting hot. And we're heading back right on time. Enjoy the views. Guys, another mango smoothie. <laughs> Look, I have one of these every day that I've been in Karabi because these smoothies are so freaking amazing. Fresh mango, yogurt, ice. I mean, this is so delicious, man. So good. With a beautiful view, of course. So while I was waiting on my smoothie after I ordered, a girl walked in, ordered a ton of donuts, a ton of coffee, and was very rude saying, how much time? I don't have time to wait. I need this now. I need to go. 
And the waitress was trying to tell her that you have people in front of you. She pointed to me and another girl because we had already ordered way before she came in, but they were already busy. And she was like, I don't care. I need it now. I need it now, now, now. How long? Rushing her, very rude. And I just stood there and I was just like, the absolute arrogance. I mean, you're in their country demanding them to hurry up and serve you. I literally could not believe how she treated the locals. I mean, she was extremely, extremely rude. I have never seen nothing like it. She was yelling, you know what? I don't want the coffee. Just give me the donuts. I need them. Hurry. I need them. I have to go. I don't have time to wait. And the lady was like, well, you still got people in front of you. They ended up giving her donuts. She paid and didn't even tip. I was just like, this. I was, I could never, ever treat somebody like that ever in my life could never I have never seen such disrespect in my entire life and I seen from that girl it was horrible but I waited patiently because this mango smoothie is so freaking worth it <laughs> it's so worth it mmm big that bus is <laughs> good night that bus is huge I don't think America has any buses that big man I leave Karabi today and uh, I just wanted to come and get one last view of this beautiful sea before I leave. Uh, it was, it's been a wonderful, wonderful three days. I've enjoyed my time here tremendously. Oh man, get that last look fam. Look how beautiful Karabi is. Look how beautiful Thailand is. Calm seas, beautiful islands. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. Oh, I'm gonna miss it. This is my last full week in Thailand. Uh, next week, I start heading back to America. I miss my van. I love travel, but I miss my home. I cannot wait to get back and uh, get on some epic adventures. I got a lot planned this year. Oh. Man. Look at that jellyfish. I don't know if it's alive or dead or what. Oh, we don't want to get our shoes wet. Let's take a look at it one last time. There's a lot of jellyfish in this water and a crab too. Look at that jellyfish. Man. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful horizon. One last look, fam. One last look. Beautiful Karabi and all those beautiful islands out there that we got to see. Man, I'm going to miss this. A lot of the islands that I got to explore on one of these 
beautiful <laughs> wooden ships. A, a lot of those islands, I couldn't get off the ship because there was no way to get on the island. It was just covered in water. So a lot of times when you saw me kind of on the boat in the middle of the ocean, stopped and pointing and talking about it, it's because I couldn't get to that island or get on it. Chicken Island is one of them. Uh, with the exception of the time, <laughs> well, we were stranded in the middle of the ocean. Ha! <laughs> Boy, that was an experience. Oh, that really plays on your mental, but yeah, a lot of those islands we couldn't, um, I couldn't do, uh, get off on. The first island that I went to, I was able to kind of get out, but I wanted to absorb it and, and kind of enjoy the moment. I showed you guys a little bit. Man, oh man. I miss my van. I can't wait to get back to her. So this place has a lot of cool shops, a lot of good shopping. Some of them are just opening up now. A lot of them are still closed. It's too early. And there are some shirts I really wanted to buy, like really. I mean, fire shirts. But man, they didn't want to negotiate and I just didn't want to spend the kind of money they were asking. In hindsight, I should have bought it because it was a good deal and they're closed now and I'm, I'm gonna be leaving soon and I'm gonna go see if some of these stores are open. I might just bite the bullet and get a shirt because they have some fire, fire shirts. I did buy three pairs of shorts, um, Under Armour, very thin. It's gonna replace my jean shorts. I'm gonna use that for running uh, for the summer uh, because I don't have any summer shorts. So I'm gonna replace those with the other shorts that I have that are jean and heavy. And uh, what I like is that the material is very thin um, I still have space for it. So, and I got a good deal. Three Under Armour shorts, very great quality, excellent quality. I've already washed them, good quality, 29 bucks. And they negotiated with me. So I was really happy with that purchase. And I'll show you guys that stuff once I get back to my van uh, in America. I'll show you my haul and the stuff that I bought because I'm really pleased uh, with my haul and stuff that I bought. Right now I'm waiting on uh, the shuttle to come pick me up. They're supposed to come pick me up at 10. It's a little past 10. Maybe they're picking up a lot of people or maybe they're running late, but I mean, I still have time to get to the airport. That's why I want to go early because of things like this, just taking into account running late, traffic, things like that. So I'm currently in the lobby of the hotel and uh, the name of the hotel is Wake Up uh, Al Nan, Wake Up Al Nan is the name of the hotel. And, uh, well, hostel is Wake Up Al Nan. It's not a hotel, it's a hostel. And so, yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm about to go ask the front desk how long it's gonna be, but I'll give them another five or 10 more minutes. Got my boarding pass and boarding starts at 1335 and first stop Chiang Mai. <laughs> I'm not staying in Chiang Mai, I'm headed back to Bangkok. I decided to come to Burger King. It's quick, it's easy and I've always wanted to try Burger King in another country. So I got the black truffle burger with cheese I mean look how hot that is look at that steam it's, it's got some um, mushrooms truffle sauce white cheese a flame broiled mmm smells good first bite goes to you have this bite my turn all right 
first impressions on Burger King in Thailand. It's just fantastic. It's got that flame broiled taste. It's fresh, it's hot. So I like that the burger was made on the grill. It's got that flame broiled taste and you can definitely taste the truffle uh, sauce. It's delicious. Mm. I don't know what kind of cheese this is. It cheese is a bit salty, which definitely amps up the flavor of the burger. I am not complaining at all. Mm. Cheese just oozing out all sides. I noticed that the Burger King burgers here in Thailand are a lot smaller than the Burger King burgers in America, which I'm not complaining because this thing packs a punch, tons of flavor, so good. Mm, mm, mm. This thing is ridiculously good. Like, I can't even describe it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. This is so good. And this is airport food. This is so flavorful. Mm. I could eat two of these. I should have got two. Mm. So I am finally back in my hotel in Bangkok and I enjoyed my trip to Karabi. Um, in hindsight, Karabi is not as busy as a Pai or Phuket. Uh, those areas are extremely packed all the time, 24-7, whereas Karabi really isn't. Now that I think about it, it was a very nice kind of, it was just a nice kind of ambiance. It wasn't that many people, as I initially said, because I was just shocked of just <laughs> the fact of just the initial shock of just seeing everybody and the hostel and all of that and the overstimulation and and stuff like that so it, in hindsight if you want to go to a a place where you have an opportunity to visit a lot of beautiful islands uh, Krabi would be your place Pai and Phuket are nice but they are a hundred percent more packed and busier than uh, Krabi uh, I had so much fun in Krabi uh, my first tour that I did <clears throat> of the islands I didn't get to do the whole tour because our boat broke down in the middle of the sea but the little that i did get to see i truly enjoyed the experience i wouldn't change it for nothing in the world and then the the the, follow, the couple days following the tours and stuff and you know going back out there and looking at the cave the cave is something that you can't just get out the boat and see um a lot of those islands you can't get off the boat and see there's nowhere for you to stand it's all water so like chicken island the cave beach where you saw like us passing those big rocks and you could see like the cave underneath that was the tour because there's nowhere to get out and go exploring <clears throat> i thought you could but you can't I just enjoyed being on the open water. Um, it was just a, a, a feeling I can't describe. Just the, the, It was a feeling of power, of just being out there on the open sea, seeing those beautiful, massive mountains and just being like, wow. Earth is amazing. Like just seeing all of the beautiful creations out there, the, the big rocks and mountains and it was breathtaking and humbling and I can't even describe to you. I would not change my experience for nothing in the world. So I enjoyed my time. And as for the hostel, 
I mean, <clears throat> you it, it, is, it is what you make of it, you know. Hostels are great options for those people who are touring countries and not staying long extended period of time. If you're going to be in a country for one to seven days, a hostel will be good because honestly, I didn't stay in the hostel all day. I was out all day. I came back, showered, personal hygiene, went to bed, did it all over again. So you're not going to be in the hostel all day. Or a hostel is a good option if you've been traveling, traveling, partying, and you just need some rest and you find a good hostel that's kind of quiet. You just want a couple days of sleep. A hostel is a good option. It's cheap. You can get some good sleep, get a good shower, and move on to the next country. So hostels are a great option. Will I do a hostel then? Yes. Um, like I said, I wouldn't do it for long, extended periods of time, but I would most definitely do a hostel again. I did have the op opportunity to talk to two of two of the three roommates that I had. Um, the other one was out all the time, or when I was in, she was asleep. Um, and, and when I was up and left, you know, we was just never, our paths never crossed. But, um, <clears throat> I did get a chance to talk to two of my, my, my roommates. One was from Hong Kong and the other one was from the UK and, uh, they were really nice. Um, I spoke, I, I spoke, I talked to the, the, the lady that was from Hong Kong more. We just had more interactions, meaningful conversations, whereas the other one, she was always out and then she left. Uh, first one to leave the group and I just really enjoyed uh, my conversations with her she was very sweet I got an insight into China that I never I never even considered or thought or knew outside of the news and it was just amazing to talk to her about Hong Kong and mainland China the differences how things have changed the culture the, the economy the government everything I mean it was just the conversation was so deep. It was just, I really, truly enjoyed talking with her. Um, and it was just nice to have some interaction with uh, somebody from a different country. Um, she was a real treat and a, a pleasure to talk with. I really, I really enjoyed talking with her. Um, we talked um, every day, not the first day. The first day we just kind of introduced ourselves, our names and stuff, but then every day after, we talked and it was just amazing. So hostels are also good if you just want to, you know, you've been on the travel, you know, traveling solo and you've been out there alone for a, for a while and you just kind of want some interaction and, you know, with other people, hostels are, are, are great too. Also talk, just, just to, the aura and the ambience of hostels, people coming in and out, travelers asking, you know, I had a guy, I don't know where he was from. His accent was absolutely amazing. Asking me how the laundry worked because I was washing my laundry and it was just like a big dormitory, right? And I was telling him how it worked, how much it was, how much it cost. And he's like, oh, I got some buddies and they're in the hostel right across the street from us. And they said they pay this. And I'm like, yeah, it's a, it, we pay about, you know, um, a tiny bit more, but I said it's worth it because and it's just cool having those interactions with people. And so I enjoyed my time at a hostel. At first, like I said, day one, I was shocked and anxiety and because I'm not used to this. I'm, I'm literally putting myself out there. And for those who don't understand, and I, I don't want to get too much into it, but I, I was in the military and the military, you know, we, 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 how can I put it? When, you, when you're in the military, especially during wartime situations, and then you come out of that wartime situations and you integrate back into population and civilian population in life, your life has changed forever. You know, your, your senses are more heightened. You, you, you know, you, you don't want to be in big crowded spaces and with people all on top of you. You know, I don't want to get too much into it, but if you're a military veteran, you understand what I'm talking about. If you've been to war, you understand what I'm talking about. So when people say, oh man, you're always talking about too many people, this and that, you don't, it, it's, I'm not complaining. Okay. It's, it's my life. Like the, I'll just put it this way without getting too personal. The military has changed my life forever. Yes, it, it definitely has. And if, if, you're, if you've been in the military, if you've gone to war, then you understand what I'm talking about. It, you don't want to just step into a mall and just crowded areas, all these people on top of our training. I don't want to get too much into it, but just understand I'm not, I'm not complaining, okay? This is, I'm literally putting myself out there and whether you believe it or not, it's very, very difficult for me to do. Staying in a hostel, 
being in crowded spaces, it's very difficult, but I am pushing through it because these are things I want to do. When I got out of the military, it was a just, it was, uh, I don't want to get too personal, but it was just, it was, how can I put it? It was just a journey to get back and integrate myself back in the civilian population and feel whatever normal is just to feel, you know, whatever. So, uh, it was, so, so this, the, so what I'm saying is that this whole trip to Karabi, staying in a hostel, putting myself out there was definitely a win-win for me because I overcame something that I thought I would never do. And I'm a stronger person for it. I appreciate you guys coming along with me on this journey. It means the world to me. Um, I know the end of this vlog has was a little bit all over the place. I was trying to film a little bit of the, you know, just coming back to Bangkok, but it, it didn't end up that way because I'm just, I'm still jet lagged. Not, I'm not really sleeping and I'm just enjoying life and adventures and not giving my body a chance to rest or catch up to anything. And so I'm starting to feel the effects a little bit. So I'm sorry if the end of this video seemed a little bit all over the place. I do apologize for that. Um, I still wanted to film a little bit of the experience and kind of traveling and transitioning the experience. Um, but at, towards the end, I was just exhausted and ready to come back and uh, get some much needed rest. Uh, my time is winding down and I look forward to coming back to America. And for those of you, if you're wondering, I do miss my van. <laughs> I miss my baby. I cannot wait to get back to her. But I'll leave you with this. It's This year is going to be full of surprises. I'll just say that. I, I don't want to say anymore. So once I get back to the U.S., it's, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video here and get some rest. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am back in Bangkok. There are a couple of other things I want to do before I leave. And hopefully I can muster up the energy to leave my cave, my hole. Because <laughs> a part of me just wants to stay here and just sleep every day and catch up <laughs> on rest. But I'm in a different country. No time for sleep. I love you guys. You guys rock. I have the best community. Thank you so much for your support. It truly, truly, truly means the world to me, guys. It really, really does. Um, with your support, we have built an amazing community, and it just continues to grow. And uh, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my videos and spend it with me when you could be doing anything else in the world. So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate you guys. I truly, truly do. I hope you guys know that. But I'm out. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.